Hello everyone and welcome to this live webinar in partnership with the University of Gastronomic Sciences uh, of Colenso in Italy. I am Ilaria from Doxley and I'm glad to be here today with Charles Polinski, Head of Master's Registration and Alessandro Kittorina, Head of Career Office. I see that more participants are joining, so welcome and thanks for participating in this live event with the University of Gastronomic Sciences of Colenso. If you have any questions during the event, just drop them into the Q&A box and we will take them in the last part of our event. Uh, and I now leave the floor to Charles Wolinski, Head of Master's Registration, and Alessandro Kitsolina, Head of Career Office, who will introduce the university, its academic offer, and services. Welcome both and thanks for being with us today. Thank you so much, Eladia. Um, a true pleasure being here. Thanks to uh, Doc City as well for this opportunity. Just to get to know uh, our university, to um, learn a little bit about what we do here at the university. Um, Alessandro and I have been working at the university for quite some time, but, um, and our stories kind of uh, also speak to the myriad ways that um, students find us as a university. I myself uh, studied history at a university in Canada called McGill. And I found I was fascinated with European history and culture, but I also had a real passion for food as well. And when I discovered the University of Gastronomic Sciences, I thought, oh, this is the perfect fit. And I ended up uh, coming and studying at the university. And then I, um, I actually joined the university team uh, and met Alessandro in the tutor office, which is the office that's in charge of um, academic trip planning and, uh, and organization. And he and I both led the study trips, which are one of the really unique and exciting aspects of the, of the university really more than just a um more than just a um a, a a trip it's it's really an experience uh, a full sensory experience that allows our stu students to experience firsthand food ways and food cultures not just in italy but all, all over the all over the world um and so really we 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 were able to um to sort of bring bring those uh bring those experiences to life and um now uh Alessandro is the head of the career center which um is also quite quite a special office because he together with his team really shepherd students through their whole experience at the university and help to set them up for success professionally beyond the end of their studies. Um, I, on the other hand, am there, I'm kind of the onboarder because I, I am the person who makes first contact with the students. So when a student reaches out and they send a little message, we have a little window on our on our web page, as many web pages do, which is, oh, hey, uh, are you interested in getting to know more about the university? Write us a few words. Those words come to my inbox. I respond, and uh, and a hopefully a beautiful dialogue uh, ensues where I begin to speak with the student, and we figure out what the what the best fit is in terms of program. And then hopefully, if all goes well and the fit is is right, the student then uh, or the candidate then uh, uh, applies, is accepted, and then gets to come to the university. So, um, Alessandra, do you want to jump in at all uh, at at this point, or do we we have a little presentation for all of you guys out there in the 
etherverse. And um, so uh, we can also just jump right in and sort of go in uh, right now. If obviously we're up here, we have a drone view of the university. And now we wanted to take all of you out there and swoop down uh, and just really get in there and explore more in depth the university, give you a give you a firsthand look. Yeah, Charles, I, I think it would be good for the students to have an overview of the courses so that then we can talk a little bit about what we do in, in the offices we lead and, and we can move on from that. Okay, that's that sounds great. Um, yeah, I mean, so where did the where did this whole idea come about? I mean, this university, how how did it originate? Uh, what 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 forces brought it together? Well, uh, it uh, the university was founded in two thousand and four through a joint initiative of Reggio Emilia and the Piedmont region to be the first ever institute of higher education dedicated to the academic study of food science, food culture, and gastronomy. So whereas in the past, there had been many technical institutions that were set up to helping to develop uh, technical professionals in the field of food, the founder of our university envisioned a new professional figure that of the gastronome. That's a weird term, right? But the idea behind the gastronome is somebody is a professional who, an expert as well, who understands the food system deeply from the producers and the, the supply side all the way through the transformation of food products to the finished product. So it's it's somebody who understands the value of food, not just as, as fuel for the body, but also as an expression of culture, history, place, and ultimately identity. Because food makes us who we are. We, we literally become what we eat. And that's really, that's sort of the driving force behind everything that we do here at the university. So who was this founder, this visionary? Well, he was a Piedmontese man. He is because he's still alive. His name is Carlo Petrini. And he is the founder of the slow food movement. So the slow food movement, well, you've probably heard of it or even if you haven't, it's an organization founded in Bra, which is where the university is located, dedicated to the preservation and promotion of traditional food products and food ways. So it is with this driving force that the university was created. Um, as you can see here, I mean, I, I don't wanna bore you with too many specifics. I wanna get you I want to get you pumped. I want to get you jazzed about this concept because um, it's really it's a it's a one of a kind sort of experience here. Um, and it's almost about, impossible, let me say, Charles, to understand this yes. place if you understand the values that stands at the very beginning of the foundation of this place. I Man, without the slow food movement and without the ideas of Carlo Petrini, this university would not would not have been this way and we are very different from the other ones so uh, if you get to learn why we are this way it's because you understand the slow food movement itself right and i mean Car uh, carlin as he's known little carlo um to all of us here in bra although uh, with a big imprint um, tells this tells a story of how um, he was shocked to discover that tulips were being produced in Piedmont and peppers were being produced in the Netherlands and producers were sending the countries back and forth between these two countries 
And uh, he gave uh, very uh, heartfelt speeches on this um, in, the, in the 70s and 80s, asking, per che? Why is this? Why, why, uh, why rely on global food networks when we have local food networks that suffer? And the importance of strengthening those networks as well to strengthen local food sovereignty and to uh, reduce reliance on uh, products coming from, from elsewhere. So this was really the inception of the whole um, going local uh, food movement, which he really envisioned. Um, so in any case, here you can see, I mean, one, one very cool thing is uh, with all of our programs is that you, students study both the hard sciences as well as the humanities. So there's uh, science and culture intertwined. Um, even though we're kind of in the boonies here, admittedly, in a very rural corner of Piedmont. So spoiler alert, this is not Milan. This is not Bologna. This is not Florence or Rome. You're in a very uh, a very rural setting. It's beautiful, though. Go to our website. Check out what the what the university looks like. And um, but even though it's small, we only have around 450 students enrolled at any given time. We we have what we call, in a positive way, the Polenso bubble. Which is that which are which is comprised of the students that come. Uh, we have many international students at the master level. It's about eighty percent international. It's not uncommon to find a master cohort, which is comprised generally of around twenty students, to have twelve nationalities plus represented of students from all over, and the relationships that those students forge is something that they bring forward in many cases um, for the rest of their lives because they're people that are deeply interested and passionate about food and they bring and they share their own uh, food backgrounds with their colleagues. So um, as mentioned, uh, we, we have a number of different programs. Um, I'm not sh not sure sure who in the audience, the ages that we have um, of listeners. But let's say you're about to, um, you're finishing your high school. You're looking for an undergraduate program uh, that's going to open up some interesting possibilities in the food sector. You might want to consider our three year undergraduate program. Uh, again, our programs are all. Uh, accredited. We're accredited as a university, uh, something that's not always the case for a lot of uh, culinary programs. Um, sometimes they only issue a certificate and you don't get university credit. So no matter what you end up doing, you might just keep that in mind. Certainly one of our, one of our strong points. Uh, here you have two-year graduate degree program in um, uh, sustainable food innovation and management. You also have a two-year graduate degree in international gastronomies and food geopolitics. So you can see that each program, while sharing similar characteristics, does have certain defining features. So you might be interested in, learn in drilling down in a specific area. And that's really where our programs uh, shine. We only have one faculty of, uh, of gastronomy. And so we're highly specialized in, in that respect. Here again, a, let's say you don't wanna study for two years. We also have one year master programs available. 
You study here in Polenzo, lessons and activities at the university. Usually they're frontal lessons that take place in classrooms very much like the space that my colleague Alessandro finds himself in. Um, beautiful, modern, recently refurbished spaces. And you can expect that the professor would present a lecture and evaluations would generally be in the form of take home papers. Although they could sometimes be oral exams or group projects. Um, just going through our master programs, uh, Master of uh, Gastronomy, one of our more, most popular programs, um, is really a, a journey across the world through the lens of food. So this is a very interesting one for those that really want to take an anthropological approach to the study of food. If you're interested in how in rolling up your sleeves in the kitchen, chopping onions and uh, frying some steaks, this might be the program for you, the Master of Applied Gastronomy and Culinary Arts, because this one, unlike the other programs which are purely academic, also has a technical component at the Polenza Food Lab, which is a structure designed specifically for this master to give students of this master the opportunity to learn uh, kitchen techniques and kitchen skills. The Master in Food Culture Communication and Marketing, on the other hand, is for all of those uh, budding marketing and uh, communication professionals that want to specialize in the food sector. So you might, we've had students from this master go on to work for Lavazza, for example, which is a coffee company in brand uh, positioning, refining, and um, as well as marketing campaign management. The Master in Wine and Spirits are those uh, who have more of an interest in the liquid side of gastronomy. So wine and distilled beverages. We, I should add that beneath the foundation of the university is something called the Wine Bank, which is an arc that's dedicated to uh, archiving, preserving, and showcasing the best of Italian wines. I've been there. It's, it's just lovely. It's so cool in the summer. And the wines that you can, you can get there are really pretty nice. And a lot, of, a lot of the labels you can't even find at the Italian supermarkets which is quite something because as you might imagine, they're full of Italian wines. But the wines, the wines that you find at the wine bank are really quite special. It's open to the general public, but there are spaces that are dedicated to the lessons that are part of this particular, um, this particular master program. So yes, that's, that's certainly something to uh, keep in mind. Now, for those that are interested in food sustainability, this would be the master program for you. The unique element of this one is, as you can see, beyond uh, these, these day trips at, um, at producers, you also have a special internship with Terra Madre communities. Terra Madre communities are ones that are sustained and supported by the Slow Food Network. Um, again, a very interesting uh, master, master choice. I'll just mention this, I'll throw this out here. For, we often get asked, okay, I love your programs, but uh, do I have to come to Polenso to do them? The answer by and large is yes, you do. The reason being, that the programs are not just about the content of the lessons, 
but also the context in which you find yourselves. Learning about gastronomy goes hand in hand with living in Italy, which is, Alessandro can attest to this because he grew up in this culture. It is a gastronomic powerhouse. I mean, we are living in a town, or I am living in a town because Alessandro does live in Bra, that barely, barely has 30,000 people. And there, I think there are at least 10 butcher shops. That's how important food is to the local population. So, uh, but you say, Charles, I'd love to do these programs, but I work full time and I can't take off eight months or nine months uh, because I have to earn money. I have to earn a living. Well, we've got you covered with the executive master in um, uh, culture in wine culture and management. The only thing, though, is that it is at present a master program that we're offering exclusively in Italian. So I'm reaching out to all of you uh, Italians out there in the audience who might be interested in it. This could be something for you because you can come. Uh, the commitment, the physical commitment in Polenso is not full-time Monday through Friday like the rest of our programs. We're talking one week per month, we, one weekend, excuse me, excuse me, one weekend per month in Polenso. And it get it, you, you can come in, you can jump in, immerse yourself, you go back to your, your job. And by the end, you've, uh, you've, you've begun to pivot towards um, a field that you're passionate about. And at the same time, you don't have to uh, completely uh, pull up all of the, all of the posts, let's say, from your, your current career path or occupation. Um, so yeah, I, I think, um, you know, I'm just going to rapidly go through this. One thing that's important to know is that the university is not an island unto itself. We have many supporters and uh, companies that sustain us, um, collaborators that make all of, all of our educational efforts possible. Um, some of those collaborators are, are listed here. Uh, Alessandro, I know that yes. you also yeah. have, you, you do you do special stuff with these these companies as well in the Career Center, right? Absolutely, yes. Uh, as Charles said, we're not an island and uh, we are working well. As you probably know, we are a private university. I guess Charles told that at the very beginning of the presentation. This means that we are working, collaborating constantly with private companies that believe in the values that this university promotes. Uh, the companies that you see here in the slides are in particular the companies that are the strategic partner of the university. Uh, and there are many other companies, smaller or bigger, that are sharing our common values and they do projects together with the university as, and also they support us in terms of economic uh, budgets. Um, also, uh, this, the group of companies that collaborate with us, it's not limited to the strategic partner and the supporting members. And uh, as a matter of truth, uh, my office, the Career Center, we collaborate with, I would say, thousands of companies around the world uh, because we really believe that every single student is a unique person. So it would be kind of impossible to limit your choices to maybe uh, a group of 30 companies like my universities might do with. There are a closed list of uh, companies to choose from when you have to decide where to do your internship. But, well, quite obviously, the companies that are in the bunch of the, of the supporting members and, uh, and the strategic partners are those that are collaborating with us the most, which is well, quite obvious. We work together with them every single day. So uh, it's important to get to know that, as Charles said, we are surrounded by a powerful network of private companies that work very close with us. Wait, wait can, I, can I just, and 
like, for example, Barilla and Lavazza, they exactly. come into play too for the study trips, right? Because we have exactly. ones that are dedicated to uh, pasta and coffee, right? Where you, where our students go and learn all about these these very important uh, products. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. And one of the things that probably we didn't underline uh, enough is that all the cost of the study trips are part of the fee. So the fees that you will pay when you will subscribe at this university will cover all the expenses that you will have during the study trips, which, well, let's say that you're a bachelor student, you have five study trips here. Uh, two of the study trips will be outside of Europe, which means that you might travel as I did and as Charles did as well when we were tutors to well, the Amazon forest, to Japan, to Australia, South Africa, Kenya, uh, well, name a country, uh, we probably visited that when we were tutors. And we don't do that because they are fancy trips for people that want to travel the world and eat in fancy restaurants. We do that because it's the proper way to approach cultures that are not yours. If you don't go where people live, where people have their food, where people cultivate uh, their fields, well, you can't understand that. And this is something very unique that only this university can provide in the world. And all these costs, which believe me, are extremely high in terms of expenses for the universities, because uh, all the study trips are a huge voice in our budget, are completely covered by the fees that you will uh, have to pay when you enroll in this university. Charles, I don't know if you want to add something related to this. No, I, I, I think that's, I think that's pretty much it. Um, okay. I guess it, I guess it should be said that beyond just Italian companies, we also have relationships with international companies too. Absolutely, yes. So um, there are also opportunities to do internships and have meaningful work opportunities outside of Italy as well. Absolutely, yes. Absolutely, yes. Um, um, yeah. Well, I would say that, well, you already mentioned kind of a lot about what bra looks like. Uh, I don't know if eventually you might skip to the slide number 20, the one related to the admissions group, so that we can, I saw that in the, in the messages that uh, our lovely audience is sending over to us, they, they have many questions quite obviously regarding scholarships and deadlines and uh, how much the fees are, which is kind of important for everyone. So maybe while talking about the admissions, we can start solving some of their doubts. Are we running out of time? No, we're not, we're not. But I, I guess that we should start- Because I have to say, hold your horses. <laughs> hold your horses because <laughs> I am just in love with this little town called Bra. And I have a few more little pieces of information, just little pearls to add, um, because I just really want to emphasize that it's, it's a nice place. Um, I myself came from Los Angeles, which is a city of more than 30,000 people. Spoiler alert. And it was a bit of an adjustment, but it's it's a great town because it's very complete. You have three cinemas. You have, as I mentioned, a dozen butcher shops, ten, uh, a, a whole slew of bakeries, coffee shops, museums. You're one hour from Turin, which is a big city in Northern Italy, famous for Fiat, the car manufacturer. It's one hour from the mountains. So for everybody who likes to get close to nature, the mountains are right there to welcome you. And it's one hour from the beaches and not just any beaches, but the Italian Riviera. Yes. So it's it has an incredibly strategic position and it will really give you, if 
it will really give you a, a different experience, a unique experience, I would say. And um, bragging rights to say you weren't just one, uh, a faceless student amongst a mass of students in Florence, for example. But you really, you can say after completing the program that you really immersed yourself in Italian culture um, and, and got to see a corner of Italy that's off the beaten path, but unjustly so because it's quite beautiful and in its own right. And I'll stop there. I don't want to spoil the surprise by adding more details. So you'll just have to see it to believe it. Um, let's go now and get down to the nitty gritty details. So by this point, you're thinking, Alessandro, Charles, I'm sold. I want to come and study here. What do I have to do? Well, the good news is pre-enrollment for all of our programs is online. So you can do it all from the comfort of your own home. Um, for the undergraduate program, first round, second round admissions, uh, processes are available now. Um, we're about to close out the first admission session, but there's a second one. So do consider applying. Just write us an email. You can write us even on the website and we'll be happy to respond. Um, here you have the deadlines to apply to our master programs. Uh, key, key one is uh, mid-June, end of June for most master programs. All of the master programs start in October. And then you have the Master in Wine and Spirits and Master in Food Culture, Communication Marketing beginning in March. And you have until December to apply. The pre-enrollment for those last two programs has not yet opened. So I guess at this point, should we go into the Career Center and talk a little bit about that? Uh, uh, how is our yeah. audience doing? Has everybody fallen asleep? Do we have some people I, still I awake? Don't. I would say don't. I mean, you're quite... Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. I think we are quite uh, I'm trying, trying to from... keep things lively here, but, um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's <laughs> difficult when you're talking into outer space and you just, you, you don't know, you don't know what the reaction is. Yeah, Thanks, we have Charles. quite a, a lot of questions, so I guess oh. our audience is quite active and responsive and interested. Okay, so uh, are. what are we thinking, guys out there in outer space? Do we want to do more PowerPoint stuff? Uh, do we want to do a little bit of the career center and give Alessandro uh, a moment to shine and yeah. really show show off his area of expertise? And then we'll get into the uh, I'll try. I'll day. try to be as fast as possible so that we will have enough time to answer to all their, their questions. And I'm quite lucky, actually, because I saw that the first three, four of them are all related to my field. So lucky, that's very good for me. And uh, well, lucky you. Uh, don't so don't rush. Me. Don't rush for me, Alessandro, because no I, I always you have you have a very uh, dulcet uh, voice, which which <laughs> I, so I just love. I love hearing You're you have so a beautiful kind, you have Thanks a beautiful so baritone, which I, I, I deeply appreciate. So let's so uh, let's take it away. You just I don't know. You can make a beat. Yeah, can, sound, I, can, can you, you please say let's down, keep going? Yeah, you're in control of the presentation, Charles. Right. Exactly. So, so if you want to go beep or just tell me go keep going, uh, I'll, I'll keep going with the presentation. Thank you so much. So, well, lovely people in the audience. Thank you so much for well for attending the presentation so far. I saw that many of your uh, your questions were quite quite obviously related to your perspectives after the the UNESG and. Uh, uh, well, I, I would start by uh, talking about our mission, which is written here in this very first slide. And our mission is to support the students and the alumni, because we work very close to graduate students as well, not just with the current students, in, uh, in designing a career that is both fulfilling and based in reality. And we decided to give us this sort of mission because uh, we want you to be ready to face the real world of Get, how to get a job, how to get a fulfilling job, and how to be prepared for that. Uh, the, 
we noticed over the years, I mean, we, we've been around for, for a while now, and we've been collaborating with many other universities around the world now. And uh, the majority of our uh, colleagues in, in other places, they are quite, um, I'm going to say, overwhelmed by the goal of finding you an internship, no matter what. You need an internship because you paid the fees and now you deserve to find an internship. Okay, my point of view and the point of view of my team is that you don't need to find an internship. You need to find a meaningful experience that is important as a first step in your future career. My goal and the goal of my team is for you to be satisfied with who you are as a professional in let's say one year, three years, five years, 10 years. And this is why we keep on working together with the alumni, even if they maybe graduated 12 years ago, if they need a shift in their career, we want to be able to support them. And well, quite obviously, if I have a list of companies that, and I say to the students, okay, you can do your internship here, here, or here, but well, that would be very easy uh, for me at, at least. And, uh, but this doesn't mean that you will find something meaningful to you. We want to guide you. We do a lot of coaching together with the students in order to understand who they are now as professionals and who are they aiming to become in the future. And then we create a program specific for you, which means that uh, you might need starting in a, in a big corporation because you need structure and you need to go in that direction. Maybe others will need to work in, a, in a small farms in uh, Turkey or with a PhD professor in uh, England. Who knows? Every one of you is different. And this is what brings me to some of your uh, questions. Um, well, first one, do you offer opportunities to get experience on field? Absolutely, yes. We do internships. If, he, if by experience on field, you mean go visit producers while well, you have all the study trips. And we also have um, the, um, the garden here. We have labs. We have sensor analysis labs. So we have a lot of experience on the field. So depending on your needs, I'm sure that you will find the right experience for you. Uh, then what are the career perspectives? This is one of those questions that all the parents of the, the new the students will ask me. Uh, well, the career perspective you have are broad. This is the real answer. You can do pretty much everything that's related to food, that's pretty obvious, as far as it's part of your passion. This is kind of important. Coming to Polenza without being very passionate about food is bogus. It's pointless. Everyone is talking about food 24 hours a day, seven days a week in this place. And as Charles said, Bra is very small. So everyone is talking about this topic. The, the thing is that if you want statistics, well, the majority of our students, they work in marketing, communication, other works in the Eureka sector. So hotels, restaurants, and catering as f &B managers and so on. But again, uh, we're talking about a bunch of four or 500 students here. If 10 of them decides that this year they want to become journalists instead of f &B managers, well, my statistics will completely change. And this is not the point. The point is to be very satisfied with what you will do in the future. Um, I read that one of the question was very close to this one on how many students do got, get a job that's related to what they started here instead of just getting a job. Well, more than 95% of our students get a job within food, which is, in my opinion, one of the greatest achievements we uh, got here because uh, if you got statistics I, I'm, qu I'm quite uh, I'm quite um, into statistics in, uh, in this period and if you get uh, to know uh, how many students in the United States got a job within the course of study they studied for uh, it's only 27 percent which can which seems quite weird and strange because you pay a lot of money to get an instruction but actually only 27% of the people that got a degree in the United States got a job 
in the same area for which they study for. So 95%, well, this is a great achievement and we're very proud of this. So going back to my slide related to the career center, how we do what we do? Well, we do a career training program in class for all the students. Uh, we organize some events like the career fair, which will be in one month, by the way. Uh, we spend a lot of time in one-on-one -on -one career guidance. The fact that we don't have this many students is, is very useful in these terms because we can have a personal connection with all of them. And we know they by name. I mean, you're not just a number when you come to Polenzo. Uh, me, Charles, the colleagues that are working for the tutor office, we know you for real. And we want to get to know as many information about you as possible because this will support us in supporting you. Uh, then, well, we have quite obviously a website where we post career um, job and internship posts, and we monitor our alumni. Charles, when you scroll down, thank you. Um, okay. In, in the meantime, I'm just going ahead and I'm answering some of these questions live that this that Perfect. students. So hopefully those hopefully everybody has seen those i'm i'm i believe i'm responding publicly so hopefully you guys are seeing those if not just let me know okay so going to our methodology as we said uh we do some general seminars that are not the kind of seminars that you might expect uh okay we do something very practical regarding like the cv the cover letter or to apply for a uh, position and so on uh, but most of all, we work together with the student in defining their own very personal mission and career vision for the future. Because without knowing what's your starting points and your long-term goal, well, all the activities that we can do together with you and getting an internship and finding the right internship for you is one of these activities. It's just one step in a very long process everything will be simply pointless. We don't want to, you to be some of those graduate students that at a certain point of their life discover that they're not happy with their life because they're not pursuing a career that is in line with their life view and so on. Uh, we have plenty of students here in the master that enjoy our courses and they enrolled in our university because maybe at 40, they understand that they, they we're not doing what they dreamt of when they were kids. And we don't want you to be part of that. We want you to be happy after your graduation. We want you to be happy 10 years after graduation. This is the most important thing for us. Then we do some well, uh, small group activities if the students ask us to do that. And as said, we do lots of one-on-one -on -one coaching together with the students. Charles, if you want to scroll down, that would be very helpful. Okay, well, here's the career fair. Uh, I would not uh, bore you with this because, I mean, it's something that's for the students that are currently here and the alumni. It's basically a three days event in which we invite organi organizations and companies from all over the world to come here in Polenzo, meet the students, have round tables together with them. We have very, um, Mm, participative initiative during this uh, this event. We have an elevator pitch for the future uh, entrepreneurs. We have uh, a real job and internship interviews. It's not just one of those fairs in which you, I mean, drop your CV waiting for someone to pick them up from the floor. Uh, it's something much more structured and uh, it uh, requires a lot of commitment from the companies and for, from the students uh, as well. But it's an event that we are very proud of and uh, so, but I mean, you can find more information on our website if you if you wish to find them. Um, Charles, please scroll down. I think that I'm almost over with my presentation. Yes, I'll talk about, oh, also if you can scroll down another one, briefly about the alumni. One of the person in my office is completely dedicated to the alumni network. Well, the alumni network is this very safe and powerful network that this university created over the years. I mean, we are quite young as a university, we are just 19 years old, but we have more than 3,300 uh, alumni all over the world. And uh, the cool thing, as Charles said before, is that they are very connected to each other because they have a very common passion, which is food. And uh, 
no matter if they are in Japan, Taiwan, uh, Morocco, or Ecuador, or Argentina, Canada, Italy, Ireland, they are they keep on talking together, they keep on collaborating together, which is something very important for us. Uh, we are boosting our network in terms of the activities that we do together with the alumni. Uh, they work very closely with the Career Center. Uh, just to give an example, on Friday, I had um, a meeting, an online meeting with one of our alumni who graduated in 2010, if I'm not wrong. Um, he was a very, he still is a very uh, famous entrepreneur here in the, in the sector and is working for uh, a huge corporation at the moment. He's looking for a shift in his career and wants to uh, look for something different. So we have this one hour uh, meeting in which he told me about his life now with two kids, different expectations, different needs. And so I'm supporting him in finding a new, a new perspective for himself. I start contacting the companies that are in, uh, in our network, uh, um, no matter if they're partners or, or not. Uh, I start sending over a CV's profile, trying to give him a boost with, uh, with our connections. And uh, well, guess what? You already received some uh, interest from, from these companies. So I'm quite confident that in a matter of weeks, he will find a new job. And I'm, I'm very happy to be able to support him in these terms. Um, we collaborate a lot also with the alumni in terms of visiting professors, especially in our, in our masters. Year after year, we are incorporating our alumni as part of the professors that are coming here for seminars and lessons, especially in topics in which they are very, very strong. Um, Charles, well, you, you're working with a professor too in the register office. So I don't know if you want to provide them with some examples of alumni that are coming to teach here. Actually, not um, not so often in the sense that I'm more in touch with students. Sure. But um, I mean, we had I know there's one of our uh, one of our alumni, Ben Simontov, which um, he's yeah, he's a, an Israeli student who is now, um, I believe, doing something related to fermentation in New York City. Exactly. He's a, he's a superstar actually in uh, in the United States in this moment. He, he lives uh, in um, in New York. Um, well, we call him by name because I mean I remember him when I was a student. Uh, was actually one of my favorite ones. But uh, the thing is that you probably know him on Instagram as Ben Gingy, and uh, he's a he's a bread guy. He's producing bread. He's posting a lot of videos and so on. He has over one million of, of followers. And uh, it was here last week, actually. So it's, um, it's, it's kind of a pleasure to keep on, on collaborating together with them. We invite them here to, to teach the new students about what they're doing around the world. Uh, we also do a lot of executive training together with the students uh, and, uh, and the alumni. So training that we do for the companies that are enrolled in, uh, in our network. So I would say that for the Career Center, I'm done, but I would take some time to answering the students that didn't receive uh, an answer yet. Um, I'll go quite randomly, Larry, if that's fine for you. I don't know if you want to read um, the, yeah. the, the questions. Oh, sure, or, I can. Uh, as you prefer. Yeah. Okay, so let's move to the Q&A session. So we have a couple of students asking for language requirements, both in terms of Italian and English knowledge. So maybe you can share more details on this aspect. Sure. Well, every single lesson here in Polenza is in English. This is the curricular language of the university. Uh, there might be when the students are in the second and third year of the bachelor course, some courses that might be taught also in Italian, because it's uh, it's a requirement that okay, it's not a requirement to, to learn Italian while here, but in the second and third year, it's important for the students to become quite aware of the Italian language, because as Charles said, we are in a very small place, so it's it's also useful for the the, the foreign students to learn a little bit of Italian, and we're providing Italian courses to them. By the way, I mean it's not something that they need to manage totally on their own. We can support them in these terms, but the curricular language of the university, 
apart from the executive master and management of wine, it's English. So the requirement is English. Uh, I would say, I don't know, Charles, if we're requiring a specific level, but I guess that it's B2 or C1. I'm not too sure about the, the level that you're requiring. B2, B2. B2, okay, perfect. Okay, thank you very much for taking this question. And now we have uh, another uh, participant asking, what kind of help do uh, international students get to move to Italy? Okay. Uh, well, this part is all in charge because he's in charge of this part for the university. Uh, I'm sorry, I, 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 I was focused, I was tuned out for a second because I was responding to questions live via the chat box. Sure. So um, uh, the question was again, I'm sorry. A participant is asking how you help international students to move to Italy. Great question. Um, we have a page of our website which is dedicated to this theme. I myself am not originally from this land, this great land of Italy, although I now it is now my adoptive homeland. Um, but I have uh, given that I intimately understand what it means to come from someplace else and move to a very small town in Bra. This is a topic that's near and dear to my heart. And I, uh, I put many resources up on this particular page of the website. And basically we, to cut to the chase, long story short, we, I assist students in getting the resources they need to set them up for success in their studies here in Bra by providing them with resources, um, personalized resources, if necessary, if not necessary, general but highly detailed and specific resources online. We, we help students in their uh, quest to obtain visas in the case of non-EU students. Um, we also have special cases. So we might have students that have following families which means that they might have spouses and or babies in tow that they're bringing to Italy with them. We also assist them in that um, and getting them set up with their, with their schooling in the case of the kids. Um, and we also, uh, there, we, we might have a student that is applying for citizenship for Italian citizenship. So we, they might say, okay, what do we do in this case? So we just, we really try and tackle any bureaucracy and red tape that might prevent the student from coming to the university and studying or from being successful in their studies, which is really important when you're coming from outside and it's a scary experience. I mean, you're, you're, you're teleporting in to a culture that's completely foreign to your own. And it's, it can be frightening for a lot of students. And so our goal really is to reduce the fear factor as much as possible and increase, maximize the fun factor and the educational factor. So, um, yeah. Amazing. Thank you very much, Charles, for your answer. And then we have Just, another... By the way, I think... Sure. Sorry, Laria, uh, but I saw that there's plenty of, uh, of questions related to the, the scholarships. Charles, I don't know if you want to answer them all live here, so you don't have to write to all of them, but many of them are asking if they can get a full scholarship, uh, if there's any way to get a scholarship in, uh, in Bolivia. I see Ruth, thank you so much for the question. And thank you so much for attending Terra Madre. We all love that, that event. And uh, so I guess that the scholarship topic is kind of important for the majority of them at this point. I'm just scanning over all the questions related to the scholarship and just trying to distill the answer and, <laughs> and hit all of uh, all, the, all the various questions. Um, the bottom line is this. We offer scholarships across all of our programs. 
they are need-based and merit-based. So we determine your eligibility to, to uh, request a scholarship during the pre-enrollment admission process. You must fulfill certain economic parameters in order to make a request. If you meet those basic requirements, you can. And then your ranking uh, in terms of the scholarship is determined based on your admission score. So not based on something from your previous academic experience like GPA or extracurricular activity. It's really all of the components of your admission dossier. We look at the completeness of the materials that you're presenting. We look at your motivations for wanting to attend the program. And we look at what you, uh, at, at the reason why the program for you is kind of that linchpin that's connecting your past experiences with what you hope to do professionally. So another important thing is that for better or for worse, the way that we have dis decided to, um, to offer the scholarships is based on citizenship. So we have a certain number of scholarships that are available to citizens of certain countries. And um, the ones that are, and so basically what you should do is check out the scholarships and financial aid page, dedicated page on our website for each of the programs. And that will give you a sense of what scholarship opportunities are available to you. Furthermore, for Italian applicants, there is also the opportunity of what's called a bridge loan through our partner banking institution, Intesa San Paolo. Um, so it's not a scholarship, it is a loan, but it's a nice loan because it allows you to uh, pay it back over the course of a number of years following your studies. The last uh, options that I just want to make you aware of are um, Canadian applicants. We are uh, beneficiaries of Canadian financial aid, and we're one of the few institutions in Italy which is also accredited as a uh, Title IV institution in the United States, which means that um, U.S. applicants can obtain U.S. financial aid, and they can apply uh, U.S. grants to their studies in Italy, which is pretty cool. I think we all have to agree. So uh, that's the scholarship uh, financial aid situation. Um, yeah, do... maybe uh, there is a topic that could be related to scholarships, that is uh, the admission process. So maybe, I... yeah, sure, go ahead. Please. Yeah, yeah, well, um, one other thing I'll add is that the scholarship process and the admissions process travel together. They go hand in hand, but they're two separate processes. So every, I, I just stress that because sometimes uh, it's important to do both, uh, make both requests right away. The key thing simply put is to just say it, say the word scholarship at some point. Um, that way, my colleague Manuela, who's in charge of the scholarship process, knows that she needs to put you on her radar. Um, so that's the key thing is, hello, my name is so-and-so, I'm interested in this program, I would like to request a scholarship. And that way, we have the most important information right from the get-go, right from the start. And uh, we, what, we won't lose you then in our, you won't slip through our nets. Um, okay, so let's, oh my goodness. So, um, Ilaria, this must be your doing. You're going through and you're just cleaning house here in the yeah. question and answer yeah. section. Um, Much appreciated. This is just, it, it's, th thank you. This is, this is lovely. Um, Although there was one question, I don't know if it was, um, I might have not responded to it yet, about working alongside your studies. 
Um, I answered so to this person. Oh, you did. You did. Chat. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I was I was responding to other questions, no doubt. Um, no worries. No worries. Uh, okay. Um, did you also and you also mentioned that even non U E U students can work, right? Uh, I didn't mention that. I, I simply said to that to this person that. Um, well, working while studying here and getting a part in job might be done. The, the only issue with that is that the calendar, the schedule of the, the courses here, it's quite hard. So managing yeah. everything uh, might not be that easy. I mean, you can do that as far as uh, your job will not overlap with, uh, with the courses, but it's not easy. I mean, you need to be Truth. very, very Truth. organized and prepared for that because you will have a lot of lessons. You have the study trips which will take a lot of your time. Uh, you will have a lot of assignments from the professors. So, uh, and you need to take care of what you invested in. I mean, if you decide to come here, well, you're not coming here to get a part-time job. You're coming here to get a course. So, uh, do that, do that proficiently, and then we can work on the real goal uh, activities of your life, which comes after, not during the courses. <laughs> Great, thanks. Excellent, Alex. excellent. Yeah. I see we have two, two questions, two last questions here. Mariana, uh, th this, uh, I, I, I've, I've had a conversation with you. Um, and uh, so it's it's good to see you here. Um, it's 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 lovely. Um, yes, the way it will work is there the official pump publication of the rankings, but that will take place in September. The unofficial communication of your admission results will be communicated to you via email uh, shortly after you've completed the admissions process. So if you need to know uh, in a timely way, no problems there, just uh, ask my colleague Elena. And as soon as all of your point scores are in, you should be able to get an unofficial uh, result of your admissions request. Um, as for Nikesh, it's a pleasure to meet you. Nick, you go by Nick, okay. One of my, fav one of my best friends from elementary school was named Nick, so. Um, yes, uh, basically the, the answer, the answer is, and this is a great question to end on because it speaks to everybody out there, which is don't be a stranger, get in touch with us, send us a message. Um, and you can go onto the website, you'll see buttons everywhere that say apply now. Okay. One thing that's important, though, is you do have to create an account in order to see detailed content on our website. Once you do, all shall be revealed, including these buttons. Click them, apply now, you get transported to the academic portal for the university. You can start the web registration process, and from there, uh, we will uh, shuttle you through, we will shepherd you more than shuttle. We'll, we'll shepherd you through the whole process. And it's all online. It's fairly straightforward to do. And that's really it. And we'd, we'd love to have you. I don't know if we've had any Nepalese students actually at the university. So it's, it's uh, not wrong you know, we, we it's, it's, it's to sure. write this wrong, Nick. You know, it needs to be you. You've got to be yeah. the first one. At this point, you have to. Okay, no. so thank you very much for answering all the questions. It's been a great job, actually. So thanks again, Alessandro and Charles, for being with us today. I would like to remind our audience that they are going to receive an email with the link to the recording of our event. So uh, you'll be able to watch it again in case you missed anything. And also, I would like to thank all our participants for joining this event for their time. I hope this session was useful for you. And we look forward to uh, seeing you in the upcoming events with the University of Colenso. 
Uh, thanks again, everybody, for uh, being with us. I don't know if uh, you, uh, Alessandro Charles, would like to add uh, one last suggestion or advice to our audience and to the participants willing to uh, start their application process. Oh, Charles, what's online? All I can, all I can say, it's as easy as saying hello. If you say hello on the website, I will receive that message and we will begin the dance of the pre-enrollment process, which will culminate in hopefully, I believe, um, successful admission to, to one of our programs. Uh, we're able to provide positions to virtually all qualified and motivated candidates who apply and we'd, we'd love to have you. We're looking forward to seeing you, Colleen, so boom. If you don't mind, if boom. you have the last scroll down in, in the presentation, I think that there's our, our desire at emails, yes. There we so, are, yeah, handsome guys. Go. Whenever you want, just, throw with us, just write us an email. I mean, we'll be here to answer to all your doubts and, and questions for everything that's related to the admission, the fees and so on, please write to Charles. For everything that's related to your future career, please write to me. And uh, we would really love to meet you. So whenever you want, we're like good or go. The, the more information we have about you, the more we can support you. And the cool thing is that we're not stealing your information too. So it's, uh, well, become part Great, of the yeah. family. It's a very nice place where to stay. Thank you very much for being with us and for your time. I wish you a great evening or day, uh, depending on where you are connecting from. And stay safe. Thank you very much. Bye bye. And Lottie, as well, for uh, being the master of ceremonies here. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Take bye. care, everybody. Ciao.